So the next point is then that um, uh, Hoover says that all economists agree about ontological individualism. If you read that, you probably don't know what he's talking about, ontological individualism. Anyway, um, what he wants to say is that individual actors are at the bottom of all economic phenomena. If you look at how are economic phenomena generated, they are generated by individuals, firms and, and individual agents on the market. Yes, there is nothing you know, strange. Um, Lawrence Klein, he says, is representative for the reductive impulse, namely microeconomics should explain, not eliminate macroeconomics. And this is, of course, um, what he thinks also, that microeconomics has some explanatory work to do for macroeconomics without elimination. But he thinks that the others, the bad ones, are trying to eliminate macroeconomics. Therefore, he has to fight them. All right. Now, the direct aggregation is not feasible. So if you have a Swiss economy, so you have something like uh, four million actors or seven million actors if the babies uh, also buy their own food. Uh, so you have these seven million actors, and of course you can't trace what they are doing and then uh, uh, derive from that what happens at the macro level. Um, the direct aggregation is not feasible. Disaggregation of macroeconomics seemed more promising, leading to more complicated macroeconomic models. We had that already earlier. Uh, he repeats it here. Uh, models were then subjected to microeconomic analysis, and if they were not compatible with the micro level, the models are to blame. This is, of course, not a bad idea, because if you have a macro model, and then you see, wait a minute, that macro model does not really confirm or is not uh, uh, nicely connected to the micro level, Wait a minute, the real action happens at the micro level. It's the individual actors, and it's only their aggregation that leads to the macro effect. So if I claim there's a macro effect that is not generated by the micro level, then of course something is wrong. And something is wrong about the macro level, not about the micro level, unless you get the micro level wrong anyway. So yes, so this is plausible. Uh, there is a principal tension, and here he's absolutely right that macroeconomic models should articulate causal relations. I explained to you the use of, of economics for policy advice is by supplying causal relations, because causal relations you can put into practice. You have an independent variable, and you know if you change that, the dependent variable will change then, and therefore you can, if you want to change the dependent variable, you can screw around with the, with the independent variable, and then you can generate this action. So you need these causal relations in order to support policy alive, uh, uh, advice, but the micro level is governed by the intentions of individual actors. And this is a very important point which you find in most of the reduction debates, that if you look at the macro level, somehow the mechanisms of the macro level are very different from the mechanisms at the micro level. Right? And that's, that is why reduction is so interesting. You have some macro level, so you have in sociology, you have certain institutions and norms right, on the macro level. And as a sociologist, you want to, and roles, for instance, you want to understand them. The micro level is individual actors, individual agents, right, who have wishes and intentions and blah, blah, blah. And that's conceptually very disparate. Roles and norms and institutions are something very different from individuals. Okay. Or you go to biology, right? So you have living organisms, right? They do very funny things, humans included, right? Um, and then you have molecules and biomolecules. And what molecules do is very, very, very different from what whole organisms do. And then the question of reduction is, can we understand what these organisms, full organisms do, in terms of the molecules that build them up? And of course, the mechanism, how what molecules do among each other and, and how they change, is very, very different from what whole organisms do. And many, many more cases. If you have solid-state physics, a solid-state does very strange things, and you want to understand it because it's built up of atoms, and so on. So it's everywhere the same, and this is why the reduction stuff is so interesting. You have a macro level that looks very different from the micro level, and then the question is, can I still understand the macro level in terms of the micro level? Right? And this is here, and there is a principal tension. All the, the reduction 
uh, all the well interesting reduction situations into which I look, there's always this tension. Right? We will see it again then with newer economics and uh, and uh, uh, stuff like that. That the micro level looks very different somehow. It feels very different. Has different mechanisms than the macro level. Now, what he describes then is that the typical procedure was that the individual analysis was used qualitatively for macroeconomic models by influencing the choice of macroeconomic variables. So you say, we have this tension here. Okay, how can I bring information from the micro level up to the macro level? And what he says is, well, you can just from knowing what's going on on the micro level, you can say, okay, let's choose variables at the macro level that are somehow compatible with what I know from the micro level. Okay, this is how he describes it. I cannot judge it. It seems plausible that you say, you do similar things, by the way, in, in physics also, that, that you say, okay, I cannot directly see the influence of the micro level on the macro level, although I know it's there. But one way of taking care of this influence is by the choice of variables that I use at the macro level. Right? How this is done concretely, I cannot tell you. I don't know enough about that. But uh, that is how he describes it. And this is, of course, a, a plausible way of dealing it. So, and what he says then in this way, the intentionality characteristic of the micro level influences the analysis at the macro level, although it is typically not visible there. Right? You do not see the intentionality at the ma macro level. You just see that certain variables change and other variables change in dependence of them. Right? This is what you see. You don't see the intentionality of individual firms there typically. So, but this is how you get information from the micro level to the macro level by a, a, a skilled choice of the variables at the macro level. Okay. This sounds plausible. As I said, I cannot really judge it. This is how he describes it uh, in order to uh, get his point, his next point, against the eschatological justification. So, a detailed micro-foundation of macroeconomics is not feasible. This is clear. We cannot aggregate these 7 million or 7.5 million Swiss people you know, in order to, to derive what, uh, what happened uh, in, uh, on the macroeconomic level. Some sort of compromise is necessary in order to connect macroeconomics to microeconomics. So the most radical approach by saying, okay, give me all the actors um, on the micro level, and then I add them all up, that's typically not feasible. Okay. So um, the question that he's uh, asking now, would the micro foundation of macroeconomics be scientifically helpful? So he says, does this make sense? I come back to this question why that makes sense in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases. And there he says, and that's a, that's a good point that he's making, consider the analogy with simple machines. The analysis of their functioning does not profit from a reductionist microdescription of the machines in terms of atoms and molecules. So, for instance, this is a fair, well, no, it's a complicated machine, but if you want to understand why this bottom does this or that, then it's not helpful that you know what the molecules in here are. What you have to know is that I press here, then I contact, and so it's enough to stay there. And this is what you're using. I'm giving you a better example later. Uh, this is what he has in mind, that sometimes we are happy with descriptions at, at, a mic at a macro level, and a further analysis in terms of a micro level is not helpful. And this is what his basic idea is. Right? He says macroeconomics doesn't really need these micro foundations. They don't help very much. So uh, here he says, and he uses this um, analogy. Well, with analogies, one has to be very careful. It may be an analogy, but it may still be that it's not a good argument, right? If it's not helpful for simple machines, why is that an argument that it's not helpful for macroeconomics? What it may help you is open your mind and say, oh, there is a possibility that something on the macro level doesn't profit from being analyzed in terms of the micro level. That's it opens your mind, but not more than that. It's not an argument in other cases to say, no, I think micro foundations don't make sense. They only tell you, oh, there's a possibility that they don't make sense. And uh, the case of simple machines is a case, but whether that transfers to the, to the uh, economics is a very different question. Right? So. And uh, the, the argument is here, this is because the laws governing the larger parts of the machine are independent of their particular microstructure. That's right, whether that bottom here is made of metal or of some hard plastic doesn't make a difference. 
um, interventions, the use of the machine can be planned and performed in terms of those larger parts. He's right there, and I'm giving you an absolutely uh, convincing example uh, later in my analysis part. And there he says there are similar cases in economics, for instance, those involving the general price level in analogy to simple machines. The recourse to microeconomics fails to provide the resources to evaluate ma macroeconomic concerns. So what he claims is that macroeconomics has this sort of independence right, of the micro uh, level, um, and, and you don't need to analyze certain um, cases, he says, uh, those involving ge the general price level in analogy to the simple machines. Whether that's credible or not is a different story. I mean, many economists don't believe it and they say, no, you need to, uh, uh, to anchor it in the micro level. Well, we cannot judge that at this point. Uh, let's see um, how he continues. And um, this seems in his paper then to terminate the argument that macroeconomics is not really in need of micro foundations. If that is the whole argument, it's a weak argument. He, the only what he argues for, and that's a good argument for that, it's possible that macroeconomics does not need micro foundations. But once you've seen the, the Lucas critique, you've got to say, wait a minute, but that's not plausible because the intentions of the uh, actors at the micro level when aggregated, may play a major role because they form some judgments about the macro level. And if you don't take them into account, we do not understand what's happening at the macro level. So whether this analogy to the simple machines works, I think it's not very plausible um, if you confront it with the Lucas critique. But that's, again, that, that's uh, now very detailed. Okay. Many macroeconomists insist on microfoundations. This is what he says, and he does not belong to them. But many, and as far as I know, and again, I don't have a quantitative investigation, I know by talking to economists, they say today that the macroeconomic models without any connection to the micro level have no chance to be published in the top journals. Right? This is what they, I cannot judge that, but I, I tend to believe them. Okay. And... Um, then, uh, again, this is what, what Hoover says again and again, as agent-by-agent agent reconstruction of the economy is not feasible, this is substituted by representative agent models or heterogeneous agent models when you break them down into several. Uh, so, and he sees that as a, as a way to micro-foundations. Yeah, according to Hoover, the latter is seen by its defenders as an intermediate step to a full and eliminative reduction of macroeconomics to the micro level. He sees always when people try to make macro, he sees, oh, they want to eliminate macroeconomics. As I said, this is just not true. Uh, you may analyze that without the intention of elimination, but he sees it as an attempt to elimination. And here you see that a that, uh, referee, uh, he sees that f uh, footnote 15, I, I found that, that interesting. A referee suggested that advocates of representative Asian models take empirical success as the warrant of their models and do not necessarily see them as an intermediate step uh, to a full reduction. And that seems to me as an outsider, that's absolutely, that's the, the most reasonable reaction, right? You do this analysis, uh, you, you, you analyze... Uh, macroeconomics in terms of representative agent models, and then you say, well, it's not really initially highly plausible that's possible, but if it's possible, wonderful, and how do you judge that? Well, whether you have empirical success or not. And then some people can may connect that with microeconomic uh, reduction fantasies, micro foundations, and other may not, because other may say, I'm so happy with my macroeconomics and I want to have empirical success with them. I'm not interested in that. So I think this, this is um, what the referee here says, seems to me, at least as an outsider in judging that, that, that is uh, extremely plausible and that um, um, Hoover is slightly exaggerating here. Um, and as I said, because of the reference to a supposed final goal of the f in the future, Hoover calls this argument an eschatological justification. As I said, I, I don't find that extremely plausible uh, that, that some people may do that, but I don't find it extremely plausible, but my opinion doesn't really count here. So uh, he says uh, Hoover objects that the, uh, to the eschatological justification uh, on various grounds, and the most important one is... Uh, that it rests on an analogy between the behavior of a single agent and the agents collectively in the whole economy. Um, 
That is right, that's the analogy, which does not respect the conceptual chasm between the microeconomic analysis and macroeconomic analysis. And there he is right, and that you have in many other situations as well. So if you say, okay, I model a cow um, like it was, as if it was one molecule, right? Then you do not respect that that's the similar thing, right? Then you do not respect that cows are really, in many aspects, very different from single molecules. Well, there may be cases in which it's good to, to model a cow as a single molecule in some game, but in other cases, it's certainly utterly wrong, right? So, um, it, just to say it doesn't respect the concept, uh, conceptual chasm between that's right, it doesn't, still may be empirically successful sometimes, or it may not be, okay? Especially, but what was, of course, a, a very important criticism, the interactions among individual agents cannot be analyzed in representative agent models, right? Because they are just lumped into one agent. And that is, of course, exactly the same when you have in physics, if you, if you try to model a whole gas as one molecule, you could never get approach to equilibrium because equilibrium, approach to equilibrium is interaction of molecules, right? And if that is eliminated from the very... Then, then that, what you're interested in, uh, cannot take place here. And of course, here you can't have competition and stuff like that. That's all eliminated. And the question is then, well, how good are these models? And if economists find application areas uh, where um, um, representative agent models work, fine. Whether they are a good step to uh, a full micro foundations is doubtful. There he's, I think, right. Okay. So in his last chapter, in his last um, uh, section, then uh, he brings a recapitulation. Uh, micro foundations of macroeconomics cannot be realized in the sense of an agent by agent analysis. Everyone will agree because. Um, well, take uh, seven million agents we could probably put on a computer, uh, but 240 million or so is r r rather hard. Um, then micro foundations would fail to provide the right conceptual resources for the problem of macroeconomics because they are often independent of the details of behavior. Well, that will depend, I guess, on the situations. And the micro foundations cannot be realized by representative agent models because they only articulate an analogy to microeconomics. That's right. Whether they in the final analysis will help for micro foundations is an open question, must be, uh, must be investigated separately. Okay. <clears throat>